Yo, welcome back. This is, I think, part two of the Turbo ZHP rebuild series. Let's jump into it. I'd get right into this, I'd jump right in and get started, but I have some pretty important business to attend to, so I will be right back. All right, now I got that out of the way. Today we're gonna start working on the fuel system. The fuel system, I wanna say it's mostly stock, but it's kind of not. Dishworks DW300 pump, stock fuel lines, stock fuel pressure regulator and filter. Goes up to an eight AN PTFE line, nuke fuel rail, FIC 880 injectors. That's, that's about it. I have a fuel pressure sending unit sensor thing for a gauge inside the car. Some of that stuff staying, some of it's going, but end goal is to get something that's totally E85 compatible and will work with the ECU that I plan on running. I want this to be dead reliable, more reliable, less dead. Let's go over here to all the fittings and stuff. I, I won't be using all of these, but this is uh, an Evil Energy LS Swap PTFE 6AN fuel line kit. No, not putting an LS in this car, but anyways, fuel line, fittings. This might give away the ECU I plan on running, but um, flex fuel sensor, uh, Dishworks regulator, Dishworks fuel filter, everything that should make this super reliable and I, I shouldn't have to worry about fuel at all. What I want to do first is just get a mock-up placement for everything. So I'm going to take the stock filter pressure regulator out and see if the Dishworks filter fits in its place. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to cut, cut this line because I won't need it anymore and hopefully all the fuel from the rail will drain out and hopefully I don't regret this. Oh, we Gucci. Okay, that's about done draining. Cut these. And I don't think I had a full tank when I parked this car, but I guess we'll find out. Oh, man. First casualty. Oh, oh man, yep. Okay, see how long that drains and we'll be back momentarily. All right, it's about done. Bust this off of here. Oh, yep. Some more came out, that's cool. Need to cut this line. Stock filter, pressure regulator is out. I uh, assembled the Dishworks filter. Doesn't come assembled, which is kind of weird. Maybe so you can run it in either direction. I don't know. They have a video on their website um, explaining how to put this thing together, so it's pretty easy. But something cool that I found is this filter and that filter, the size of the body, I mean, it pe appears to be the same. So I slid this little rubber sleeve off of this stock filter and I'm, I think that means I can mount this under the car in the stock location with this clamp and not have to drill into the car to mount this, which would be really cool. I'm gonna test my theory. Man, how cool is that? It's not perfectly tight, perfectly snug, but that's snug enough. It's gonna have lines connected to it. It ain't going nowhere. That is cool to see. So that means I can still run this crusty cover that I'm, I'm not sure if anyone else actually runs, but that's cool. I like that. On to the next. I think the first line that I'm gonna make is gonna be this short one from the feed into the filter. So I'll get to use one of those cool little fittings that converts. Oh, we're leaking. 
Oops. So I'll get to use one of those cool fittings that converts the stock hard line to 6AN into there. Looks like it's gonna be really short. <laughs> Maybe I can shift this forward a little bit if I need to. Yeah, I shouldn't have a problem. Something I am just now figuring out is that these quick connect fittings that go from like the stock, the factory, whatever, hard lines to AN, they only work on the end that doesn't have the flare on it. So the end with the flare, I was just struggling to get this thing on and couldn't. Came to the conclusion that that flare part is essentially too wide to fit in here. So I thought, hey, I wonder if I just cut the flare part off, if that would work. So cut the flare part off and then this slides on and then it has o-rings inside you won't be able to see but it has o-rings inside this seal and then this little piece slides over there with the cutout and then basically threads on and then now this will not come off so i'm going to take a leap of faith and i'm going to attempt to cut these lines this is the, the barbed section that I was talking about, how it kind of flares out. I'm going to attempt to cut that off on both of these so that these quick connect fittings will slide on. If I ruin the lines, then oh well, whatever. I will just do AM all the way back. But I'd rather not have to do that, so I'm gonna try this first. And also hopefully I don't burn down the car. That was sketchy. There weren't any sparks. These might be aluminum. Someone's probably gonna correct me. I'm gonna call that a win, at least for now, until I figure out if it leaks or not. But fitting just slips on. It's pretty snug in there. And then this little locking ring thing seals it on there. It's snug, it ain't going anywhere. So I'm gonna throw the other one on and continue. I got this little straight female to female union because this is definitely not enough room for a hose end, a piece of hose, and then another hose end fitting. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will do the trick. Cool. So got it on there. I got this crazy looking thing now. So <laughs> old, new. I think this looks cooler, whatever. 90 fittings, there's a 45 off the bottom and a straight off of this side. I'll show you why in a second. It came with this gauge. I don't really need it because I'll have one in the car, but it's cool to have it on there. I figure right here is about the only spot that I have in the car to mount it. I'll probably put a bolt through that, bolt and nut it. So we'll set it here just for sake of the video, whatever, but. I don't know. I think it looks cool. Should clear the hood right there. Looks somewhat like it belongs. But anyways, this little straight fitting will be a straight shot to the rail, which if you can see I have the banjo fitting off of the rail and then a dash eight to dash six reducer. And then this little 45 and that should be more or less a straight shot to there. This will be the feed um, coming from underneath the car. And then the very one on the bottom will be the return going to the blue uh, factory hard line. So I guess all that's really left to do now is make the lines themselves and mock everything back up. I'm gonna start with the, the smallest hose, which is gonna be the supply from the regulator to the rail. It's got a really short run. I'd say it's about six inches or so. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to mount this right here. If not, I can, I'll figure something out, but I, I do like this location. So basically gonna mark and label this. And come over here. Then I'm gonna basically put tape 
right in the middle of where I want to cut this line. And that does two things that gives me reference point to cut. And it also protects the braided sleeve from fraying too bad when I cut it. Now to cut this, this is what I use. There we go. So the PTFE, it's like a plasticky sleeve inside and then there's actually a layer of stainless braided and then on the very outside is the black nylon. I'm gonna clean this up, shoot some bright clean through it, take my tape off and continue. Be careful where you point that. Coming over here to test fit my hose that I just cut, just to double check. Looks like we position it right like that, and then come over here, where we go, right there. So it looks like that's gonna be just about perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these hose ends on. So I have my hose ends. First step, slide your hose end on. Second step, spread out the stainless braided portion and you're gonna stab yourself in the finger a few times just accept it okay that's done take your little crush sleeve and that's gonna slide over the PTFE it's kind of hard to get on there sometimes you have to use some force Call that good. So you should slide it on so the PTFE is fully butted up to the inside uh, lip of this. And then what you're gonna wanna do, I like to take some engine oil, just a little bit, don't need too much. You're gonna get that into the PTFE Slide it all the way on there. Slide your whatever this is called up. Start threading it in by hand. You can look inside to make sure the barb piece isn't sliding out of the PTFE. Um, you won't be able to get it all the way by hand, so then let's move over to the vise. So I'm going to clamp this in the vise here. I have these plastic soft jaw attachments they're magnetic i think they're like six dollars on amazon so this whole entire build sponsored by bezos by the way if you haven't noticed already get that in there pretty snug take your wrench thread it in the rest of the way okay and you'll feel it bottom out yeah Looks fine to me, looks pretty good. One side down, let's do the other side. Here is our finished line. Came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. Time to test fit it on the car. Nice, fits exactly how I wanted it to. Right off of the back of the rail there, over the manifold and over to the pressure regulator. So lined up pretty perfectly with where I want to drill a hole to mount this. Like I said, if this hose was, you know, a little too long, 
or a little too short, that wouldn't have lined up. So, so you have to be pretty precise when you measure it. I'm gonna do the rest of the lines now. The process is gonna be exactly the same. Just measure from one point to the next, cut, assemble, test fit, install, whatever. Wow, lines are done. Let's get them on the car. All right, that's a wrap. Pretty happy with how it came out. This is the feed hose into a Dishworks stainless fuel filter. Out of the filter goes the supply up to the regulator. Regulator returns back through the ethanol content sensor and then back through to the return. Coming up here above the car, I still need to mount this, but that should be pretty easy. Maybe like a little rib nut in this little plastic thing. It's pretty thick, I think it'll hold it up. Like I said, the return, this guy on the bottom, and then this is the supply that comes up into the regulator, and then from that regulator to the rail. As you can see there. It's a new day, as you can probably tell. I just got all the lines uh, cleaned out, tightened up, and I'm gonna try to see if this fuel system holds pressure, so wish me luck. Don't judge the mess. It's for a good reason. All right, let's see if this baby will first prime and then even hold pressure. Ooh, I hear stuff. I don't see fuel spraying anywhere. We're getting some pressure. That's neat. No leaks under the car? What is this? Everything's dry? Well, that's cool. I'm gonna have to do some research on what the fuel pressure should be, um, just like static without the car running. I think this is how you adjust it. I've never had an adjustable one of these, so I'm gonna have to do some research, get that set up before things progress. I'm gonna go ahead and call that a success. I can't start the car because I have a bunch of other, like some of the oiling system is disconnected right now. So starting the car is gonna have to wait till lots more stuff happens. A lot of exciting things are brewing for this car and I cannot wait to get to work on it and ultimately drive it, rip it with the homies. You guys know who you are. So I think I'm gonna end the video there. Really appreciate you guys watching. This is probably on the longer side of, of videos. So if you stuck it out, thank you, appreciate it. I'll see you next time.